Hello everyone, so welcome to the thermodynamics part 5. In this video we shall be dealing with the concept of entropy, then the entropy calculation for various processes and the Gibbs free energy. So first of all let us begin with the spontaneous and the non-spontaneous processes. So a process is spontaneous when the work is done naturally or without any external force. So let us see if we have a ball here, if we place it on the incline in this manner then the ball will tend to move in this direction naturally without any external force. So this is known as a spontaneous process. If we place the ball here and we wish to move the ball up along this incline then we have to apply an external force with the help of a thread or something so that it moves up the incline. So the work is done against gravity here. So this is known as a non-spontaneous process. So now let us move on to the concept of entropy and understand it that what does it mean. So entropy means that it is, it is the degree of randomness and it is represented by the letter S. So now let us move on to some mathematical calculation for the entropy and let us see that how does it to be defined as in mathematical manner. So entropy that is delta S we shall be dealing in change in entropy is defined as delta Q reversible upon temperature at which it is measured. So this is the mathematical formula for entropy. Now we shall be using it to derive the thermodynamic processes. Let us begin with the first law of thermodynamics which we have already learned that dQ was equal to dU plus dW. Now dQ will be equal, now let us divide both sides of this equation 1 by the temperature. So we will get dQ by T will be equal to dU by T plus dW by T. Okay, so now let us move on further. So dQ by T can be written as dU is NCV dT upon T plus dW can be written as P dV upon T. So let us name this as equation 2. So we know that PV is equal to nRT. Differentiating both sides of this equation we will get P dV is equal to nR dT. So the value of P dV is equal to nR dT has to be put in equation 2. So we get dQ by T will be equal to ncv dt upon t plus nr dt upon t. Now we shall be integrating both of these sides to get the value for the delta s. So it will be in this manner. We shall be integrating from t1 to t2. So putting on the limits we get this as delta s so delta S will be equal to N C V L N T2 by T1. Okay, because we know that this has to be written in the form of temperature. Now this can also be written as N R T2 upon T1, L N T2 upon T1. But that does not hold much importance here because both the cons constraints are already measured in temperature. So we shall not be dealing in this one. Rather than let us modify this equation to use further. So let us use this here. So we have dQ upon T is equal to NCV dT upon T plus PDV upon T. So let us see that how we can modify P to use in the form of temperature. So we know that PV is equal to NRT. So from here pressure will be equal to NRT by V. So let us put this value here. So we will be getting from equation 2. Let us modify this term in, on the rough work. So we get NRT by V into dV by T. So T and T gets cancelled. So we get NR dV by V. So now we shall be integrating this term from V1 to V2 to give me in the final answer as NR dv upon v integration from v1 to v2 from here t1 to t2 so we get the final value as this thing will become delta s 
which will be equal to n c v l n t two upon t one plus this thing will become n r l n v two by v one. Now I hope you understand that why I have cancelled this equation and taken this one because in this we have only one variable that is the temperature. You can see both of these are in temperature form only. But if we have two variables that is temperature and volume, then that would be more helpful in deriving the thermodynamic processes. So let us move on further. So we have moved on to deriving this equation. Now let us use use it further. So C P is equal to C V. Minus R, or let us see that C V, C P minus C V is equal to R. So C P will be equal to C V plus R. So from here we can write C V is equal to C P minus R. So we shall be using this one to put it in this equation. So we get delta S is equal to N into C P minus R L N T two by T one plus N R ln v2 by v1 so we have just take taken this equation and we have put it in this equation which we have already derived on the previous page so delta s will be equal to let us simplify it it will be equal to ncp ln t2 by t1 then minus nr ln t2 by t1 plus nr ln v2 by v1 i hope you have got the point here So delta S will be equal to n C P L N T two by T one. Now this can be written as plus. Now let us put this in the bracket itself. Minus n R L N T two by T one plus n R L N V two by V one. So let us simplify it further. N C P L N T two by T one. Take out the n r as common, so we get l n v two by v one from here minus l n t two by t one from here. So we get in the further equation n c p l n t two by t one plus n r. Now this thing will become by the properties of log l n v two into t one upon v one into t two. So now our next goal is to simplify the thing which is written in the bracket here. So we know that P one V one will be equal to N R T one. P two V two will be equal to N R T two. So from here, what we can write is that the value of N R from here will be equal to P one V one upon T one will be equal to N R. From here we'll get P two V two upon T two is equal to N R. So both of these have to be equal. That is obvious because N R from here has to be equal from N R from here. So we'll get P one V one upon T one will be equal to P two V two upon T two. So let us find the value of this from here. So we'll get. Let us take P two on this side. So P one upon P two will be equal to V two into T one. Upon v1 into t2, so we have derived this. Now let us put this value here. So we'll get the value of delta s to be equal to be equal to n c p l n t2 by t1 plus n r l n. Now this thing can be written as p1 upon p2. So p1 upon p2. So we have derived the value of delta s in form of temperature and pressure here. And here we have derived the value of delta S in form of temperature and volume here. So now let us move on to the next page for deriving the thermodynamic processes, isochoric processes. Before beginning with it, many people would be thinking here that V two upon V one can be written as P one upon P two because volume is inversely proportional to temperature. But that would have been completely wrong, and that derivation has been shown here because here it has been written as C P. C V and here it has been written as C P. So you have to understand the difference between the two. Just not put the values here arbitrarily. You have to derive the proper answer so that the final answer should be correct. So the isochoric processes we shall be deriving the entropy calculation. So delta S will be equal to N C V L N T two upon T one plus N R L N V two upon V one will become what 
सी वी वन विल बी इक्वल टू वी टू बिकॉज इन आइसोपेरिक प्रोसेस देर इज नो चेंज इन वॉल्यूम एंड हेंस इट विल बिकम एल एन वन सो दिस थिंग बिकम जीरो सो द वैल्यू फॉर द आइसोकोरिक प्रोसेस इज डेल्टा एस इज इक्वल टू एन सी वी एल एन टी टू अपॉन टी वन isobaric isobaric processes imply that p1 is equal to p2 because pressure has to be constant so let us use the second equation so delta s will be equal to n cp ln t2 upon t1 plus n r ln now it will become 1 so this thing becomes zero so the value of delta s is n cp ln t2 upon t Isothermal processes implies that temperature has to be equal or temperature has to be constant. So we can use any of these equations to get delta S is equal to n R L N V two upon V one, which can be also written. See, this thing will also become zero. So delta S can be L N n R L N V two by V one. Now in the second equation, this thing becomes zero. So delta S will also be equal to n R L N P one upon P two. So I hope the point is clear. If you know the derivations, then the thing is very easy. If you just cram, there will be infinite formulas to learn. So now the last one is adiabatic processes. If you remember that in the first page of this video, I told you that delta S is equal to delta Q reversible upon temperature. So delta S is equal to delta Q reversible upon temperature. Now for adiabatic processes, we know that dQ has to be zero as discussed in the first law of thermodynamics. So thus the value of this thing becomes zero. So the change in entropy in the adiabatic processes is zero. So no matter how difficult the question is, if it is given on adiabatic process, the entropy change has to be zero. So now let us move on to the Gibbs free energy concept. i once again say that if you practice everything like maths deriving all this stuff then there will be no difficulty in understanding any subject so now let us begin with gibbs free energy first of all let us understand a simple concept here that delta s for the universe that is the change in entropy for the universe will be equal to the change in entropy in the system and now what does not come in the system is surroundings so the change in entropy of the system plus change in entropy of the surroundings okay so i hope that this point is very clear now the next point which you understand is that heat taken out from the system is equal to heat given to the surroundings if i take out heat from the system so where it shall go the heat will go to the surroundings so heat is given to the surroundings so i hope that this point is also clear so in other mathematical terms we can say that the q let me say system or surroundings you can deal in anything the heat of the system will be equal to minus heat of the surroundings the point is very much clear the modulus will be same but the negative charge the negative sign is just given to show the direction of the heat flow you can place the minus anywhere according to your wish you can change the statements so now let us move on further we know that delta s is equal to delta q reversible upon t so it can be further written as delta s for the surroundings can be written as dq of the surroundings upon t i hope that this point is also clear now the delta q for the surroundings differentiated on both sides dq of the surroundings can be written as minus dq of the system from here so what we get here is that delta s for the surroundings will be equal to minus dq of the system upon temperature now for the dq of the system can be written as minus from here only minus t into delta s of the surroundings now let us take the equation one that i had written here multiplying equation by t on both sides so what i get is t into delta s for the universe will be equal to t into delta s of the system plus t into delta s for the surroundings i hope you have got this point here so t into delta s of the universe let us leave it as such only will be equal to t into delta s for the system 
plus t into delta s for the surroundings can be written from here as minus dq of the system so now let us move on further so this term is defined as delta g or after taking it on the other side actually we define it as delta g so let us wait for that stuff so we take this thing here and this thing here on the opposite side or let us say let us multiply this equation 2 by minus so let us multiply the equation 2 by minus here so we get minus t into delta s for the universe will be equal to minus t into delta s for the system plus dq of the system so this thing is actually known as delta g or gibbs free energy actually we take it on the other side but i multiplied on the minus by both sides so this is known as delta h because it is heat only so popularly known as delta h and this is t into delta s so we can write it as delta g is equal to delta h minus t into delta s so this is the expression for the gibbs free energy you can see it very properly here delta g is defined as minus t into delta s for the universe not system not surroundings it is universe delta h is for the system and delta s is also for the system so that's why the derivation was important because you need to understand that what term is related to the universe or what term is related to the system or which term is related to the surroundings so, so you this point is should should be very much clear in your mind for je advanced a derivation was asked in 2013 about this topic so you can see those questions also and if there are doubts in the video then you can definitely ask me in the comment section thank you